Caleb set this up. So if you're a Duke fan and you're mad, then Caleb's your guy. Okay, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, the like button. We appreciate that. And we want to ask you this question. And I'm going to let you fill in the blanks on the message board. Worst whiners in recent Vols history. So there was a good bit of whining by Duke. And then I included Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. Although I don't know what South Carolina would whine about. They they won. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn has LASIK. Uh, correction, it has cataract. Uh, correction as well. And man, you're just going to see better with no contacts and no glasses. And don't forget, they can do your regular eye care as well. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn, they're the only one that's local. So here are the first four I picked out. Duke, Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina. Worst whiners in recent balls history. Caleb, what do you think from today's tough question? I don't think it's close. After this weekend, it's Duke. <laughs> it's well, I've got to come up with four choices. It's it's Duke. And Duke is the – they are the Karens of basketball. They are the ultimate Karens. Explain that to me because my kids use that. I don't know what the Karens means. So it used to be like it, – it's it, it, it used to be a phrase to like the – privileged upper middle class woman like housewife who's like you know middle age somewhat that um she gets in everybody's business and then she worries when she's mildly inconvenienced the ultimate can i speak to the manager person the ultimate can i speak to the manager when you're a worker just doing your job okay i i can be a speak to the manager type of person um well the one who is trying to undercut you so like some of the ones who were harassed during the during COVID and during the masking, however you felt about masking, the ones who a store says our policy is mask. Somebody comes in, has a takes a stand up. I don't have to wear a mask. And then they get mad when they get kicked out of the store because guess what? The store, whatever you felt about the mask, the store has a right to set their own rules. Sure. And, and so um, or complaining that uh, one recently, it, it's, it's these videos that go viral a lot. So one um the remember the central park woman a few years ago that that uh, called the police on the guy because all he did was ask her to put her dog on a leash i don't remember that one he asked it her to put her dog on a leash a, <clears throat> seems like we got quite a few of those nowadays yes he asked her to put her dog on a leash she called the police on him and said he's harassing me <laughs> okay that seems a little... somebody says dave why do you hate south carolina so much i don't even when we didn't do anything you still hate on us i find it an incredible uh compliment that sc scout guy would still like the channel even though we're primarily tennessee coverage so um, <laughs> are you good with the four though that i threw out there the uh duke georgia alabama south carolina the but, uh, the worst whiners in recent balls history, those four. Yeah, I mean, I would try to squeeze Kentucky in there, but Kentucky did sweep Tennessee this year. But typically when Tennessee beats Kentucky in basketball, Kentucky just whines like to nobody, to no end. But I, I will say my experience with Kentucky fans pales into what I dealt with in Duke fans this past weekend. I've never seen fans. This is the- say Kentucky instead of South Carolina since they won. Yeah, yeah, we can do yeah. Kentucky. Well, I mean, they didn't win last year in football, but South Carolina, what do they have to whine about? They beat Tennessee. So there we go. The poll is up. Uh, the worst whiners in recent balls history. Uh, go Duke, Georgia, Alabama, Kentucky. Who do you think wins in this thing, though? I mean, I think Tennessee fans will select Alabama or Kentucky. I'm selecting Duke. After what I saw, we don't see – we we covering Tennessee don't see Duke fans a lot. You know what I mean? How, we, we talked about it over the weekend. How many times have the two played? I mean, not that much. And after this, guys, this is the program that cheered on Grayson Allen and is complaining about Tennessee being dirty. Let's just let that <laughs> sink in for a minute. True. Um, <laughs> in, in Dave's defense, Spurrier started South Carolina. Hey, I love South Carolina. I love Steve Spurrier. I've got nothing against South Carolina. Yeah, we're going to have to tell – we're, we're in the media, so we have to tell people this now. Guys, even if you cover Tennessee media, there is no more beloved figure from a media perspective than Steve Spurrier. He's every journalist's favorite head coach of all time. Am I right oh, about yeah. that? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. 
The fact that he would call up John Adams of Florida Week as a columnist and say, hey, John, you got anything to write tonight? <laughs> you just call him up is pretty unbelievable. Duke fans can be insufferable. Not all, but Duke. some Duke fans can be insufferable. I've never understood, and I said this last week, why you can be a middle-class, upper-middle-class person and pick out a school that would probably never take you, your kids, or your grandkids as your favorite basketball team makes no sense to me. I mean, you're probably never going to get in there. No matter if you make a 34 on the ACT, no matter if you have a 4.2, you're probably going to have to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. And that's uh, very, uh, very frustrating. So why would you pick them as your favorite school? Just because you had a couple of dudes that maybe looked a little bit more like you uh, that were named Christian Leitner and Bobby Hurley? Is that it? I've never understood why Middle America likes Duke. Because they have media stooges that cover for them everywhere. Okay. Doug Gottlieb was running, you know, was just out there carrying Duke's water cooler over the weekend and complained about the Uros foul. Then he started to complain about how, how what Uros does is just how dirty people play in Europe. And then, of course, there's a tweet for everything. So we found an old tweet of him talking about how much he likes Grayson mm-hmm. Allen six years ago. Um, well, how about we find – Video footage of him stealing stuff from his teammates in the locker. You did that. <laughs> Doug Gottlieb <laughs> did that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gonna lose all credibility there if you're stealing from your teammates in a locker. Yeah, room. that's ridiculous. Reportedly, I didn't watch it, but everybody on Twitter said this happened. The game day crew after the game, the ESPN game day crew called it a football game and said that the refs got Tennessee to the Sweet 16. Which, by the way, Duke fouled more than Tennessee in this game if anybody actually watched it but I mean you know okay so what would be your answer would be Duke and I, I BDB Sports who covers Georgia is on with us too so I'd love to get his thoughts because uh, basically I have um, been just destroyed by Georgia fans so so is Caleb I mean attack because we mentioned that they might have NCAA issues. So if I go back to that list, recent history, I would have to say Georgia right now, Caleb. Well, from us, and us specifically get destroyed more by Georgia fans because we went at the, um, at the program, I think in a fair way, but I understand that. Duke's complaining because a physical, Duke fans are complaining because a team beat them doing what they do. Duke bragged about being physical throughout the ACC tournament. And then Tennessee, yes, we all we both agree. Uros, that, that was a bit of a ticky. That was an elbow. He was trying to send the message with that elbow early. I'm not going to pretend that. But to act like like half of Twitter was like Tennessee's playing penitentiary ball. Okay, that. but let me stop you right here. If you're on Duke, if, if you cover Duke on a day-to-day basis, can you at least make the argument that Tennessee was too physical in that game? Can you even make the argument, Caleb? Let me no. just go there. No, because they tried to be physical. Tennessee was just more physical. That's that's where I get at it. I'm going to agree with you. And I, I like to see the other side of it, but I thought both teams were very physical. I thought very early in that game it would come down to who had the deeper bench, and that was Tennessee. And I didn't think one team was significantly more physical than the other. Maybe the cut under the one Duke player's eyes made it look like that, but I didn't. I didn't feel like that was the situation. You? No, not at all. I didn't but feel they like were both they, physical. They were both physical. They both flopped a little bit. Like everybody came at Uros for the flop, but like the 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 tough box out Uros did that was a flop by Duke. So it went both ways. And again, Duke was doing this throughout ACC play. They were bragging that this was how they won the ACC tournament, that they were more physical than everybody else. And then someone out physicals them. This is the equivalent of the bully on the playground that's punching a bunch of kids, and then another bully comes and punches that bully, and then he cries and says, look at this bully. Can you believe he punched me? It's like... SEC Scout guys with you says, I dislike Duke because 99% of their fans have never even stepped foot on campus. Right. And most of the professors would hold you in great disdain if you did. Yes, because they're an the, they're the elitist group. I mean, that's fine if you've made all this money, you want to have your own little college there and be special and pack Cameron indoor. I mean, that's fine, but I don't know why anybody that didn't go there would ever root for Duke. I, I don't understand why they're, they're they have a strong they do have a strong fan following, though. 
They have a media machine that covers for them. They have they are institutionally supported. Remember the NBA? I think one of the worst things ever was the NBA. Institutionally NBA. supported. I, what does this mean? I'm excited. So, so the doing. media institutions back them again. We saw what – again, the way it was reported on how Tennessee played Duke over the weekend was just – that would not have been reported the other way. Also, let's just bring this up for a minute. Can I love you, when Caleb says, let's bring this up for a minute. That means I've <laughs> he's got something good. Another coach in any sport that got to coach the Olympic team four times in a row? Uh, Jim Beheim is an assistant for Mike Krzyzewski. Yeah, okay, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but Mike Krzyzewski, get, do you not think that he played a huge role in his recruiting? I mean, not, don't get me wrong, he was Coach K, he was going to recruit well anyway. You don't think that gave him a massive advantage, though, when he's coaching the Olympic team? Four times in a row? Well, yes. I think that <clears throat> gives you a massive advantage. I also think the other thing that gives you a massive advantage is the piles of money that are sitting around there. Are you telling me that it's not easier to move some money around when you're at Duke? I'm talking before NIL. It's okay now. But the fact that they were some sort of bastion of great sports moral ethics and oh. it's just – bizarre to me i mean if you walk by past mike krzyzewski at the wrong time of day you could get dog cussed i the sanctimoniousness does drive me crazy that's perfect work yes and by the way i'm good on this because you know when you know who else drove me crazy with their sanctimony back in the day and for the record guys i i worked a, i worked at a small town newspaper in western maryland for five years there was a penn state satellite campus when the sandusky scandal broke and it didn't shock me because joe bertrano was the most sanctimonious coach in all of sports and it drove me crazy, and I thought he was a fraud from the start because of that. You know who the guy that really bugs uh, coaches in coaching circles with that? Who? You could guess if I gave you a few minutes. Uh, Hugh I mean, Freeze. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, gosh, the Bible verses that he tweets? and Pastor, Pastor Hugh, that really bothers other coaches. They feel like it paints them. I mean, most coaches are in this area of the country are Christian as well. I mean, how devout they are, I don't know, one-to-one. -one, but they feel like it makes them – Look like they're they're not as devout as him. When Hugh in retrospect, Freeze validates the stereotype of the idea that evangelical Protestant Christianity in this country is just a business scheme. I'm not saying that's right, but a lot of people view evangelical Christianity in that way. And Hugh Freeze is the peak person they can point to. For I, I do hope for his sake that he has turned things around. It, I mean, it would have to be incredibly disheartening and embarrassing to go what he went through. Can you imagine if that ever happened again? And that he looked like a hypocrite twice. I, I hope he's got things worked out, but I tend to hope the best for most people. Try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Except for Ezekiel Elliott, he could just uh, go away.